Be careful of the light at the end of the tunnel. It could be a train. It's a very beautiful day. I think this is gonna be a very interesting trip. So let's check it out. Well, this is very interesting. When I left, it was uh, very sunny. As you can see now, it's very cold and cloudy. Don't have a jacket, but maybe the hike will warm me up. So let's see where we're at. This is the Miwok Trail. I'm not sure which one of these trails I'll be taking, but as usual, we'll just go for it. So we are here. Uh, now what? Ah, let's just go. So you notice we crossed the Golden Gate Bridge and where we're heading to, it's this area I accidentally discovered. Um, I'll post a video about how I discovered this place and also in that video there's a tour of the Golden Gate Bridge if you're interested in that kind of thing. 
Um, I think this is going to be a beautiful hike and it's going to end in a beautiful area, even though this is all beautiful. But it'll be like the kind of the peak of the trip, I think. We'll find out soon. <laughs> There's a lot of things crawling around here. Now I just thought I saw either a fox, could have been a coyote. So it was hard to tell in the distance, but it's moving up there. Up there in the bushes somewhere. Nothing but fog. <laughs> what a view.
Okay, we're gonna get ready for the scenic view here. Stable structures do not enter. This whole life is unstable. Very interesting to find at the top of the mountain. So this area is called Hill 88. I uh, just looked that up real quick. Uh, it says Hill 88 played an important role during the Cold War. It served as a radar station for missile launch area. How about that? I would say that this roof area is not stable. Didn't look like it stopped people. Let's go to acoustics in here.
I hear something way in the distance. It's actually what we're supposed to see right now, actually. <laughs> Do you hear that? We can't see it from up here. Uh, so let's see if we can see it from down there. Yeah, very good hangout spot here. This is one hell of a trail, check this out. Be careful of the light at the end of the tunnel. It could be a train. I do have to say this is the most, probably one of the most interesting places I've been. Gun number one. Looks like the assigned uh, gun pointers, recorders, whatever all that stuff means. Gun mechanic. And cannoneers, wow. You can see it now, right? You know what time it is.
Well, I have to say that is one heck of a view. <laughs> this hike is uh, really nothing I expected. I was hoping when we got to the top of Hill 88 that we can see the ocean in the distance, but all we saw was fog. And that kind of reminds me of, uh, I guess, our human condition. Sometimes our mind is clear, sometimes our mind is foggy. And this reminds me of something that someone just recently posted on my YouTube channel. Uh, his name is Jason. So thank you, Jason, for uh, making the comment and kind of asking a question. The comment was a response to my video, 30 years practicing down the drain. Now, if you haven't seen that, uh, I put a link down below, so go check it out so you have the full context of this. But basically it was about um, a Korean monk who was practicing for 30 years in Korea and did his first three month retreat in the Providence Zen Center in the United States. And uh, basically what happened is there was a nun who was in a higher seat than him. He got very set, upset and he left the retreat. So the exchange between my teacher and this person who was in the higher seat was my teacher said, this person's been practicing for 30 years. And then Myoji Sini, this nun who was in the higher seat said, yeah, 30 years practicing down the drain. So the, Jason's response was, you know, what if something triggered him? You know, everybody has some kind of trigger. So maybe something happened in the past with their family or some kind of situation. And then later in life, something happens and it causes a trigger, right? Where we kind of have a flashback or go back to this old karma that we used to have. I already mentioned that we all have a foggy mind from time to time. Sometimes it has to do with holding some view or maybe we're holding our opinions or we're putting a lot of energy into our likes and dislikes. But sometimes it's just past karma. And that just means our past conditioning from a long, long, long time ago. So Jason's response was, maybe this monk had a trigger. And if that's so, what do we do about that? And I think that's very interesting because sometimes I think there's this misconception that Zen means that we're perfect and clear all of the time in every moment. Now that's just a fantasy that doesn't exist. Yeah, sometimes we nail it, we perceive the moment clearly, and we're able to respond in a way that's helpful, but usually that's not how it is, at least for me anyways. When something appears in our life and it sets a trigger, we sort of go into this kind of dream, this cloud. So that means our mind is foggy, it's cloudy, right? It's not clear, it's not able to meet the situation, to see it for what it is, and there's no way that we can respond in this kind of conditioning. Most of the times in our lives, we make some kind of mistake or we cause some kind of problem. And usually when we make a mistake or uh, cause some kind of problem, we attach to it, right? We pour more energy into the mistake that we made. And then that just snowballs and it creates just more difficulties for ourselves and other people. Almost in every video, I'm talking about seeing truth. That means just seeing things for what they are. So if we make a mistake because our mind is cloudy for whatever reason, it doesn't really even matter what reason, how do we make that mistake clear? What do we do about it? Do we put uh, all of our energy into holding it and attaching to it or trying to get rid of it and causing more problems? Or can we see it as it is, see it very clearly, maybe even digest it so some wisdom appears and we can make that mistake clear? This reminds me of a koan in our tradition, the Quantum School of Zen. It's called Dok Song Carrying His Bulls. Uh, Korean name is Dok Song and Chinese his name is Tae Shan. So Dok Song one day was carrying his bowls into the meditation room. That's where they would go eat. And the housemaster noticed that the Zen master was carrying his bowls to the meditation room and said, Master, the bell hasn't been rung. The drum hasn't been struck. Where are you going carrying your bowls? And Zen Master Dok Song just paused. Didn't say anything. Then he just turned around and he went back to his room. So this housemaster was very confused, didn't know what was going on. So the housemaster went to the head monk and told the head monk the situation and what happened. And the head monk said, that old Zen Master 
doesn't understand the last word. And what that means is he's saying that the Zen master doesn't understand his correct function at that moment, right? He just went to this meditation room with his bowls, wasn't even time for a meal. Housemaster acknowledged it, asked him a question, and he just turned around and went back to his room. So, you know, the housemaster's thinking, is he crazy? Is he going senile? Is this a special teaching? That's why he went to the head monk to see, but the head monk said he doesn't understand his job. <laughs> so, of course, wherever you have human beings, the rumors go around in the temple, and Zen Master Doksong hears about what the head monk said. So he goes to the head monk's room, pounds on his door, and the head monk opens the door, and Zen Master Doksong is very angry, and he says, do you not approve of me? And it's very interesting. The head monk whispered something in Zen Master Doksong's ear, and Zen Master Doksong was relieved. As the koan story continues, the very next day, Zen Master Dogsong gave a Dharma talk on the high rostrum, and his speech was different from before. Then the head monk clapped his hands very loudly and said, Great joy! The old master understands the last word. This is a very interesting koan. I call it the human relationship koan because there's a lot of things happening here, a lot of people making mistakes, a lot of emotions and thinking happening in this koan just like our lives. So we have a series of questions we asked students about this koan. One of them was, when the head monk says, Doksong doesn't understand the last word, so what is the last word in this situation? The next question we ask is, if you were the head monk and Zen Master Doksong says, do you not approve of me? What could you say to him? So in the story, the head monk whispered something in the master's ear. What did he say? And I think this is a very important question, probably one of the most important call-on questions that I have encountered, right? Because this happens a lot of the times in our life where we say something, somebody gets mad. So how do we first bring the anger down? How do we make our relationship clear? But also, how do we make the situation clear, right? Instead of pointing fingers and say, you did this or you did this. It's a very interesting question. The next question is, how was his speech different from before? And there's a fourth question, which I think is really, really important. And this kind of goes back to when we make a mistake, how do we make it correct? So Zen Master Doksong was bringing his bowls to the meditation room for a meal. And the head or the house master said, old master, the bell hasn't been rung, The drum hasn't been struck. Where are you going with your bowls? So if you were Zen Master Doksong, how can you reply to this housemaster? Finally, there's a bonus question because the housemaster is like, the bell hasn't been rung, the drum hasn't been struck, where are you going with your bowls? Which is, you know, if you look at this, he's a very young monk, and at this time, Zen Master Doksong's very old, so wasn't very skillful, I would say, <laughs> in this situation. So if you were the housemaster, what could you say to Zen Master Doksong? This koan is very, very important. If we can digest it, it can really help these situations in our lives where our mind is foggy, our mind is not clear, and we make mistake, or we react on some conditioning from the past. That's okay, that's part of being a human being. So Zen practice means being with that. So if you make a mistake, how do you make it clear? So sometimes we just need to sit with it and digest it, and then maybe we can go back and make the situation clear. It really doesn't matter, but the most important is make it clear. Because when human beings don't make relationships clear, we cause a lot of suffering. Of course, you can see this in our friendships and our um, relationships with loved ones, with their families, with their coworkers, with their neighbors. So very, very, very important is to see our mistake clearly, completely digest it, and then make it clear. It's very, very simple. But it takes some kind of effort and it takes some kind of practice to do that. So those are my thoughts for the day. Let me know what you think in the comments about this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the scenery. Again, it wasn't what I expected, but it turned out to be quite amazing. Hill 88 has some very interesting structural pieces around there. So thank you for being on this journey with me and I will see you soon.